tonight I there, there's something that is really kind of uh, unique for me. It's something that's um, a topic that I have firmly believed in for, well, since I've been in the Word, so 20 years. And it's regarding our calling, that each one of us is called of God for a specific purpose. And I remember as a kid, when I, the first time I got to answer the phone and talk to people, you know, it was really awesome. And most of you will not remember the old rotary phones. I do. I yeah, know. people, are, some, some of you do, but some of you don't. But I remember playing on the phone and my mom and dad would get really mad at me for playing on the phone. And, but I remember anytime the phone rang, I always wanted to answer it. And... We have to understand that God is calling, and it's up to each one of us to answer that call. And I remember that enthusiasm and that excitement and running to the phone to beat my brother every time. That's the kind of excitement that we have to have in our lives to answer the calling of God, and not just for ourselves, but to inspire others. Because perhaps God is working something in the depth of your heart that only you know what it is. Maybe there's just something there that God is working for you to do. You know, I remember, for the most part, all my life, there was just something missing. And I always wanted to do something Right? I always wanted to do something. I wanted to be a vet, veterinarian. I wanted to go be in the Coast Guard. I wanted to go in the Navy and be a scuba diver. There were things that I wanted to do in service. Right? In service. And it was a longing. I wanted to do these things. And it wasn't until I, I really started growing in God's Word that I realized that God was calling and not only was he calling for just anything, but he was calling for a specific purpose. And it was between God and I. One day I remember living in the state of Arizona and coming to the realization that life sucked. I hated life. And my prayer to God was not a kid-proof prayer. It was very rude, very vulgar, very demanding, and very angry, to say the least. Because I knew of God, but I did not know God. And if it was bad, I did it. And I wasn't looking for God. I was looking for answers. But there was always something I'm impressed on my heart. I tried to be good, but I was surrounded by bad. And what I mean by that is I chose what I did. I chose, just like anybody else, who I surrounded myself with. And I chose to live with drug dealers. So all the drugs I wanted were mine. And I never paid. So I'm living this life, but I'm also at the same time questioning what the purpose of it all is. Why? What's the purpose if it's going to be like this? And I struggled. There was a point in time when I rented a house from this really creepy guy and his brother. And I lived, I was dirt poor. I mean, I had enough to pay rent. And I would hop this wall that was like an eight foot block wall and stole oranges from the neighbor so that I could eat. And I just wanted answers. I wanted to know what's the point of all of this if it's going to be like this. Now, I, I worked too. You know, I did have success according to the world. I, I did at one point. I made crazy money. And I spent that money week by week. 
And I made more money then than I actually do now. I made like a thousand dollars a week. And I partied. But I was not happy. I had no joy. I was really quite miserable. I saw a lot of death around me. And I simply wanted answers. And God, all the while, he's calling. He's reaching out and he's calling. And there's a huge part of this that I'm leaving out. But at one point in time in my life, I realized that it's up to me to do something. I cannot rely on people. I have to make a decision to do something. And so I reached out to God. That's what I did. I reached out and said, God, what the F am I doing here? This is horrible. I don't want to live. Now, I was never about taking my own life. Just the thought of it. But I wanted to know my purpose. Let's turn to Peter. Second Peter chapter 1. Where was I? So you can read the first part of this. I don't want to take the time, but, well, I guess we should. So according as... His divine power, in verse 3, according as His divine power hath given us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of Him that hath called us to glory and virtue. See, God has called us. And that's the first thing that we need to carry with us. God is the one calling. But it is up to us to answer. Because I could have chosen to stay down that path. Whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises. That by these you might be partakers of the divine nature. Having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. And when you make a thousand dollars a week. When you're 21 years old, the corruption of the world and that lust of the flesh, it is not satisfied. And so you seek to do things that are crazy stupid. I remember racing my motorcycle at 170 miles an hour through Sky Harbor Airport in Phoenix, Arizona. And on the way there, people died. And it's not a... I'm not playing that up or down. But the realness of this is that this is the world. And the world is after us. Because the world is calling too. With the lust of the flesh and the pride of life. And the decisions are ours. But God made a way for all of us to escape because he called. That way is always there for each one of us to escape because here's the reality. Just because I escaped one time in my life doesn't mean that the adversary doesn't have another plan to trap me. He's always planning. He's always plotting against us. And all the while, God, who called us, has made a way for us to escape. But it's so much bigger than that, because he called us for his purpose. And the only way we're going to know what that purpose is, is through his word. Because prayer is not enough. Prayer is not enough. So you can pray all day long and still not have the answer because the answer is in God's word. Let's keep reading. And beside this, beside what? That calling. 
right? He has called us to glory and virtue. Beside this, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, and to virtue knowledge. God's will is for all men to be saved. And I've said this before, and that's the easy part. God did that in Christ. It's the second part that's on us. And to come unto a precise, accurate, applied knowledge of the truth. Because when we walk out the door, it's on us. It's easy here, but when we walk out the door, the adversary's got plans. He's got plans. And to knowledge, temperance, or self-control. See, when I was young and dumb, I had no self-control. I had none. I would get high and fly. I would get on my motorcycle and I would go as fast as that thing could go and I would push the boundaries beyond what I thought were capable. And there were times when I should have died. And I'm being this maybe a little intense because there's a harsh reality in the world that it's calling. It is calling to distract us from the calling of God. What call are we going to answer day by day? Because, yeah, the calling is there, and the gifts and callings of God are without repentance. It's going to be there the rest of your life. When God calls, it's there. But it's up to me to answer that call on a daily basis. And it's really that simple. Am I living up to my calling of God? Now, it's not by works. There's none of that garbage. we got to relax a little bit. It's in our walk. Am I walking in love? First, have I recognized that still small voice, that calling of God? And then what am I doing about it? Let's keep reading. Because there's great principle in this section of scripture and there's great points to help us understand and enable us to live our calling to live what God has called us to do and to knowledge temperance and to temperance patience or endurance and to endurance godliness and to godliness, brotherly kindness, and, un, and to brotherly kindness, charity, the love of and for God in the renewed mind. See, the love of and for God in the renewed mind is prerequisite to everything that we do. Because without the love of God, we are selfish, we are stubborn, we are foolish, we are prideful. And that doesn't get us anywhere. Nothing can be accomplished with the way of the world and the calling of the world. So only in answering that calling of God on a day-by-day -day basis do we see what God has in store, those great and precious promises that He has laid before us. That's the key. But it requires answering that call. Anybody remember the first time they got that phone call from their girlfriend or boyfriend? Right? You couldn't wait. You were like, get away! It's mine! It's for me. Well, that's how it's got to be for God. That's my call. I got it. Stand back. That is the calling of God. Right? You just push people out of the way. Push the world out of the way to get to that call. Everybody's calling is different. Nobody's calling is less than the others, less important. Everybody's calling is vitally important to the movement of God's word and to the body of Christ for the purpose of the fellowship of the mystery to live and to prosper.
and to brotherly kindness, charity, the love of and for God and the renewed mind. For if these things be in you and abound, make you, excuse me, they make you that you shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. And in that knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ, we learn who we are, our identity. And in our identity, we learn our liberty. And it's in that liberty that we can serve our calling to the utmost, the high calling of God. That is where we go. That is where we take ourselves. That is the call that we must answer. But if he lacketh these things, he, excuse me, but he that lacketh these things is blind. And I know that's harsh. And I'll tell you this, I've been blind in my life. And that's okay. Just don't stay blind. Just don't stay blind. Keep your finger here. Turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Let's look at verse 4. In whom the God of this world, the God of this world, the thief, Satan, Lucifer, the devil, your adversary, as a roaring lion, the God of this world, hath blinded the minds of them that believe not. So this is a lack of believing. The context is those that are lacking in the believing to get born again. But the overall context is bigger than that. Because any one of us can be lacking in believing at any moment. Lest, that's the key. Lest, unless, or until the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. That's right. It's the light of God's word that dispels the darkness. That's why we've got to be in it. That's why we've got to answer that call and we've just got to get our heads and our hearts into God's word. The practical application is, Am I reading it? Am I hearing it? Am I living it? To the best of our ability. And yes, we are responsible for what we know. But no, we can't stay where we are. We've got to keep growing. Let's go back to Peter, Second Peter. See, this is about your calling. This is about your personal relationship with God. What is he impressing in your heart? Because you know your long suitabilities. I know my long suitabilities. I also know my weakness. But you know what? You've got to focus on your strength. Because if you look at your weakness, that's what the world wants you to do. That's what the adversary wants us to do. We must not look at our weakness and be confounded. We must look at our long suits. The very moment I look at my weaknesses, I'm defeated. But the very moment I look at my strengths, I can look to Christ. I can look for the solution. And then I can hear that calling. And that calling is, what am I supposed to be doing? I know my calling. And I know when I'm not serving my calling. When Kelly and I first moved back here, I drove a very good friend of ours a little nuts when I continued to tell him that we're serving no matter what. We are serving. We came down here. We didn't have a title. We didn't have a position. We came down here to serve. And we did that. And we are doing that. 
See, it's between you and God. Run to that phone call. Push everything else out of the way. Turn to James chapter 1. James chapter 1. We've just got to push everything else out of the way. Because look, here's the, the fact of the matter. Is the rightly divided word is our livelihood. If we do not have the rightly divided word, then how can we ever rightly apply it? And if we're not rightly applying God's word, then where's the power? There isn't any. And so what the adversary does is he gets us in a position to where we get distracted in life. Right? We get distracted to where we compromise. We compromise on the rightly divided word. We compromise on the rightly applied word. And this is how we get defeated, because we get distracted. And we've heard at times, a distracted mind is a defeated mind. And it's true. We've got to stay sharp here and stay mature in our thinking, because the book of James is addressed to Israel. It is not addressed to us. However, there's great principle. There's great learning in this book. There are things that when and where we can apply them, we can apply them. Because you can always apply principle. But we've got to stay mature in our thinking. Because it is addressed to the twelve tribes of Israel. It says so in verse 1. James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ. To who? The twelve tribes, which are scattered abroad. However, there's great principle to glean from this section of Scripture. If any of you, in verse 5, if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God. Well, what is wisdom? It is applied knowledge. How do I apply this, Father? Father? How do I, what do I do here? It's that simple. Go to God. Let him ask of God that giveth to all men liberally, and abradeth not, and it shall be given him. But, let him ask in faith, in believing. And believing comes from hearing the word. Nothing wavering. No doubt, no worry, no fear, no hesitation. Look, we must never hesitate for a moment, but a split second in our believing. Well, you just got to keep walking through it. Never hesitate. Because God is working in you. <laughs> in you. In <laughs> us. <laughs> Preach it. <laughs> it was in you. Oh, boy. <laughs> Nothing wavering. For he that wavereth, wavereth is like a wave of the sea, driven with the wind and tossed. Look at verse 8. For a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Look, the pleasures and the pressures of what the adversary has will throw us off course. It'll get us double-minded. We've got to stand on the truth of God's Word. And that can be hard. Because you go to work. You go to work, and there's going to be people that could influence you there. You go to the grocery store, and you might be hearing people talk about the Bible and about Scripture. And perhaps they say something that sparks something, right? And it sounds good, but if we're not careful... It can be wrong doctrine. And that's all I'm saying. If we allow wrong doctrine to take, to take seed in our mind, it'll take root. And once that is taken root, it's so hard to get it out. It's so hard. We've got to remember our calling. Part of our calling is 
as children of God, we are to study to show ourselves approved unto Him. That's part of every child of God's responsibility. That is part of our calling. We are to individually study to show ourselves approved unto God as workmen that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Period. It's your responsibility as much as it is mine, as, ne- as much as it is the next person. We all have that responsibility. Let's go back to Peter. We don't want to be blind. We don't want to stay there. Actually, I think we, I need to finish 2 Corinthians 4.4. 4. No, I did. Where did I leave off? Nine. But he that lacketh these things is blind. And cannot see afar off. And hath forgotten. He's forgotten. See, the adversary wants us to forget. He wants to forget our calling. To ignore that ringing. He wants us to forget who we are in Christ. And have forgotten that he was purged from his old sins. See... Again, it all takes us back to the law. Because sin lives in the law. And I'll tell you, if we want to live there, it's miserable. Our liberty in Christ is free from the law. Redemption. Salvation. Sanctification. Justification. Righteousness. Verse 10, wherefore the, rather, my, wherefore the rather brethren, give diligence. Give diligence. Put in the effort. Fight for this thing. Don't give up on it. Pursue it. Answer it. Seek it every day to make your calling and election sure. To make it sure and solid, and firm. We must never forget who we are in Christ. For if you do these things, you shall never, what? Fall. Fall. And that's the goal of the adversary. To get you and I to fall. We've got to continue to answer that call on a day-by-day basis. Never giving up on who God has called us to be. And pursue... That still small voice. What is God working in you? Figure it out. Search it out. But don't forget who you are in Christ. Never forget that God called you for his own purpose. You are God's best. You are God's sanctified. You are his chosen. You are his righteousness in Christ. Christina, will you pray? 